Hey everybody, it's Angie Woods. Okay, these are some things we're all cooped up together. How can I exercise my dog while we're stuck in the house? Let's check it out. If you're new to our channel, please be sure to drop us a like and hit the subscribe button below. You'll be the first in line to receive our new videos. The shell game, or cup game in this case, is really great for food-driven dogs, but you could also use a small toy, maybe a small ball if you have something like that. Beware of small balls with large dogs, they can choke. But hide it, rotate it around just like you would a human, and uh, give them a command to go find it. And let's see what they do. Anytime we require a dog to focus mentally on things, this is what I'm about with our structured walk, but anything that requires us to focus works our brain out. And so in these times where we're all cooped up a little bit more together, we're not getting outside quite as much, we want to work on brain power, so exercising the brain. So stage one of finders keepers is all about letting him see it so he can learn how to find it. And you should give a term like go find it, just so that they have a cue to uh, take action. All right, so I'm gonna let him see it. Uh -uh, lay down. He knows what this is. All right, come back over. Willie is extremely high food drive. Lay down. So this is a great trick for food drive dogs. Right, I'm just gonna make it very easy for him the first time. All right, all right. go get it, Willie. Go find it. All right, he found it, yes, all right. So we don't have to be crazy to it necessarily, but the reward is the tree. And so in this game, I recommend starting off very tiny, like you see, this is just a few feet, and then learn to grow your space and grow the difficulty in finding it. It's a great brain game. Obedience, uh, even though it's not part of what I do in my everyday life with dogs, it is a really good brain training when you need something brainful to do. Okay, it really makes them think and work on things. And they're also, these are helpful commands. Remember, dogs don't know commands, they know words. They make association to words. So um, these are helpful when you're out and about. Maybe you want your dog to lay down and stay somewhere. So good brain training. All right, all right, Britt, you sit. Oh, you don't want to lay down. You sit. Hey, Piggy, sit. He's tired. Will, you sit. Okay, lay down. <laughs> Brick is already laying down. A little unusual for Brick. All right, and Piggy has learned to lay down, haven't you? Can you lay down? Lay down. Nope. Lay down. It's been a few days. Maybe your fever's gotten to you. Lay down. There we go. All right, so we only treat when we're on the ground. So Piggy is new to our family. He showed up during the fireworks on uh, New Year's Eve. <laughs> okay. Um, uh -uh. Lay down. Lay down. So he's learning his obedience commands. This is all brand new for him. So as you see, we just guide him down. There's no pushing, shoving, or being harsh. It's all about being calm, always calm and stable. Practice your emotional fitness when you're having a hard time. Now, if you cave in and give your dog a treat at the inappropriate time, when they didn't really follow through for you, you're rewarding that. So remember, one of our favorite sayings at Dog Psychology is, whatever you love, you get more of. So only reward the behavior that you're looking for, which means all the way. If you want them to reward them for laying down, encourage them to lay down and then give them the treat very timely manner. They put the two and two together. Yeah. And lay down. So it's hard for dogs to learn how to lay down after a sit. <laughs> and then the next level would be bringing them from a down how about up to a sit. Just another little tip. 
That's it. Mm -hmm. Huge tip for high food drive dogs. Make them calm down before you give them the treat. Don't treat them when they're out of their mind. So come down to zero, zen, mm, relax. Then I'll give you a treat. All right, so another exercise. This is not really exercise. So this is more of a giving your dog just a little bit of something to do. Maybe you're gonna be separated from them for a little bit. You're going outside or just something and you wanna entertain them. So a bit of a calm and a bit of peanut butter. And if you just smear this in, don't make it super easy for them to get, kind of smear it on the sides. And then if you wanna make it a little bit more difficult for them, pop it in the freezer for an hour or two and let it get hard. So great for dogs. So you can either use peanut butter or cream cheese. Um, they do have things that you can squirt and spray in here, but I'm just like, for me, I'm about real food. I'm also about real food for my dogs. I tend to not give them treats or anything that's made of artificial stuff. Great little tip though. Fetching is definitely something you can do indoors or outdoors. Now, this is when we're gonna break some of my rules a little bit. Now, for me personally, this is not a blanket rule by any means. I don't let my dogs play in the house a lot. We live on a little bit of a farm. They have plenty of room outdoors. Some of you guys do not live on a farm, I would say most of you, and some of you are in apartments, high rises, um, just where you can't get out readily a lot. So we can play fetch inside, I'm gonna show you that, but there is some warnings about using the stairs like I'm gonna show you. You could use hallways, which are flat, you could use the stairs, but we really want to watch things for blowing out cruciate ligaments and things like that in our puppy's knees or hurting their shoulders. So if they have anything that we're going to worry about, we're not going to use stairs at all. But if you feel like your dog is healthy and spry and this is a good thing, give it a shot. Uh, the more intensity they use, the more likely they are to maybe hurt themselves. So let's just be a little bit careful. All right. You know, Brick has a very high ball drive. So this is a great exercise for him. You ready? Ready? We may have to do this a little bit to get what we're looking for. <laughs> you sit. Ah, lay down. <laughs> he had a little learning curve. He would not do that for me. It's funny the difference in his reaction to your commands when it's a ball versus food. Yes. Okay. Totally. This shows this is yeah. might be a good yeah. drive, right? Because like I said, he's like, mm. but the ball. The ball is Brick's crack, okay? Uh, food is Willie's crack. So when you think about what your dog's crack is, that's what their high drive in. Another game, not just fetching, might be actually just catching the ball or the frisbee or the toy. Just a little bit of eye-mouth coordination. Treadmills are great tools, but something I want us to remember, these are meant to supplement walks, not to replace our walks. Remember, a natural dog life means that dogs need adventure. So also be very safe with treadmill training. I'm breaking this down into little steps for you. If your dog is freaking out, especially if you have any type of collar that may cinch up on their neck, we wanna be very careful not to hurt your dog. You could collapse the trachea if you're not careful. So be very gentle, go slow and take your time. So first things first, we wanna approach the treadmill and just stop and take your time. Your dog may wanna sniff it, check it out. Don't be in a hurry. Let the curiosity happen, that's a good thing. Anytime a dog is using their nose, it means their brain is open. So let them sniff the treadmill, chill out a little bit, and when they're finished investigating, you're probably gonna notice they're gonna look up at you or try to walk away. I really like the looking up at you part. Then we can guide them. Have a little term, I say hop up. Hop up on the treadmill. Do not turn the treadmill on. Just get on the treadmill and share something positive, either a treat or love or whatever your dog loves. And then I would come back off and come back on. I would do that three, four, five times, depending on my dog's dog analogy. If you have a right brain dog, remember doganality.com. We'll put a link in the description. Um, if you have a right brain dog, we're gonna need more time, patience, relax. Then when you see the dog is relaxed, standing there, you get some positive reinforcement, you're gonna turn it on very low. Typically it's about 0.5 miles per hour. Some treadmills start at one mile per hour. That means you're gonna need to turn it down really quick as soon as you hit the power button. So 
Getting dogs used to things is a patience practice. If they have a little reaction, which is normal in the beginning, smaller dogs tend to do better, by the way. Um, but remember, you're gonna hold them up right here, right in the center, just center them up. If they're freaking out, slow it down, go to the slowest level possible to get them walking and encourage. You might have someone stand in front of the treadmill to talk sweet to them and encourage them. You can use treats if they're not too distracted by it. What you find is that they, on the treadmill and they can't eat the treat and walk at the same time but with practice they certainly can all right and then gradually increasing the speed to find your dog's speed and remember in the beginning it's kind of slow but not too slow and we're going to find that comfortable rhythm just comfortable not jogging not running and then later you can work on doing it leash free after just a little bit of practice all right good luck be safe but as a caveat, we're not just stuck in the house. If you are well and healthy, keep your social distance, but get outside and take a walk. So I truly hope these tips help you in your natural dog life. We wish that you stay healthy and safe and your family stays healthy and safe. Hang in there and we're all gonna make it through guys. Thinking of you.